Okay, it says we're live on Facebook. So let me just introduce myself real quick. I'm John Stewart. I am a volunteer with the Boy Scouts of America, and I have been tasked with the marketing for our contingent, for the BSA contingent, uh, to get, we want to get 300, 400 uh, young people to join us in Ireland next summer uh, for the World Scout Moot. And uh, in order to, to talk about the moot, uh, we are really excited to have uh, Kali. Uh, your professional name, as it says on Zoom, is Colm, uh, Colm Cavanaugh. But uh, everybody in Scouting Ireland knows you as Kali, correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long, it goes way back to the first day I joined the Scouts, actually. Uh, I went into the, the local Scout troop, and uh, one of the guys who was in the troop was in my class in school, and he says, oh, Kali, you're joining the Scouts, and that's it's stuck ever since. So that's where it came from. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well. So I know you're a professional scouter there in Scouting Ireland, and you have been tasked with being the director for the World Scout Moot. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. We're going to ask some real quick questions uh, from you. Uh, number one, you know, here in the U.S., we do not have an older scout program like the Rovers uh, in so many countries around the world. So can you just talk real quick about since we don't have Rovers here in the BSA? How will the moot be different than any other world event? Because a lot of us just went to the World Scout Jamboree in 2019. How is yeah. the moot different? The moot, it, well, it's fundamentally different because the target audience is older. So it's 18 to 26. So it actually is 18 to 25, but we've extended the an extra year because we postponed the event for a year. So it's 18 to 26, which it's an adult audience. It's not. It's no longer a young person's audience. It's a, it's a young adult's audience. So, right. um, so it's reflected in that in that the the moot is. It's not a finishing school, but it, it, it's taking all your your scout experience that you had as a young person and bringing it to this international event, which places you in a position where you're with people of the same age, but also. Your transition, there's a transition going on in your life. You're going from maybe a school to a college environment, maybe to a work environment, and you're kind of your lifetime goals, skills, personality is kind of de derived in that time. You know, you're meeting girls, doing all that sort of stuff. It's it's, it's a different life experience than maybe your teenage years, and the mood is set up in that context, so it immediately drops you into an international exchange where you can get to meet people we wouldn't ordinarily meet on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, obviously it's all done in the in the context of the scouting family and, and that type of thing scout spirit and stuff like that you know well, Kali, can you tell us the difference between a moot and like a jamboree i mean so, so yeah my, so, i had two boys one went to japan one went to sweden we all right. went to the world scout jamboree here and uh as americans we love the jamborees uh, yeah, but tell exactly. me the difference between a jamboree and a moot yeah, the essential difference, the real core difference is that the participants don't are immediately placed in international patrols. Mm. So from the day you arrive, you kind of disengage from your, your contingent and you go into an international patrol. So imagine in an ideal world, you're an international patrol of 10 people, one person from every country. Uh, on top of that, then you have all the cultural language, just getting on with each other. So that's it. That's the... That's the essential feature of the mood. What we actually do in terms of activities is kind of secondary to that experience, if you understand me. So you're immersed immediately in this international group. We will all have our agendas. We have to just, you know, find a space where we all work together, get become friends and get to know each other. So you can have that sort of deep conversation one to one with a person about different world issues and things and get different perspectives on things. and. Uh, that type of thing and the activities of the moot and the events and the fun and the thing obviously adds to that shared experience and helps that process along that's the fundamental difference whereas in a, in a war jamboree they still stay within contingent troops and patrols and they still go to an go to a, a, a program based about canoeing and come back it's it's a slightly different experience completely you know it's it's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a life-changing experience, much as the jamboree is in terms of you set up friendships which are going to be there for a long period of time after the move. You know, my the girl uh, from Chile that I met, or the the guy from Saudi Arabia, or the fella from Nepal. You have this immediate network of 
people who are in your patrol. And then obviously there's a tribe then, which is four patrols in a tribe. So you're obviously in contact with them as well. So it goes from the 10 to the 40 to the 5,000. Uh, that's the, that's so, the key feature, the, the key unique selling point really, you know. Well, we're excited. I know a little bit about the trails program, but mm. you know, so the moot's 10 days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we come over to Ireland. The great thing about the great thing about the moot is because we're dealing with young adults, not not youth and scouting. Uh, if somebody wants to go over a couple of days early, if somebody wants to travel other parts of Europe and yeah. show up in Ireland, we're not arranging contingent travel to where everybody arrives in some city in the U.S. and comes over there to get together. You're adults. Show up in Dublin on the on the assigned date and at the assigned time, and uh, it's going to be really exciting. But but talk about the ten days because the trails program and because you're 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 with your patrol. But then talk about the experience of what those ten days really entail. Right. So, so essentially, as you as you rightly point out, John, we'll see you in Dublin on whatever the day is, and it's probably maybe two days beforehand or a day beforehand the actual moot starts. So then the moot. All moots, uh, well, in the European context, generally speaking, but uh, but also in the world context, they just start them from a location. So in our case, it's somewhere in Dublin City, probably a, a concert arena. We come in, show you a big video, get you all excited, and say, "Off we go." There's none of there's none of the traditional wag flag uh, ceremonies and. A speech from the president. We're not. We're more interested in getting you out first. We'll do all that later. Uh, so it's, what they do then is go on coaches and trains and whatever transport, and they're transported out to a trail. So a trail is a five-day experience somewhere in Ireland, and there there will be approximately 36, 32 to thirty-six trails. Uh, each trail will be has the same skeleton in terms of the program is similar. But what makes each trail unique is where the location is and the people you'll interact with and things like that. So on every trail, you will have one or two, as we call them, adventure type things. You'll be going, well, say, for example, on the morning, you're doing surfing on the beach in Sligo, which is on the West Coast. Be there at 11 o'clock and you arrive at 11 o'clock and there's a surfing school there. And you, they kick you out, you go surfing and after an hour, you move on to something else. So getting to that location and whether you're there at 11 o'clock is your responsibility. It's not, there's not a team of staff. If you don't get there, you miss the opportunity. Um, we also have a service project. So much like you had on the World Scout uh, Jamboree, where you transport patrols into communities to do a service project. I was actually over there myself and I made my business to interact with some of the guys. And you know, some of the stuff they were doing was mind blowing. Um, in fact, we were need, we, while I was sitting actually in the McDonald's restaurant, I came across patrol and they were telling me, and you were nearly, you know, I'm nearly crying on this. I nearly had to hide in my burger, you know, to stop myself a tear running down my face. But you know what I They become intimate experiences where you're interacting with a local community and you're doing a project which is, has great meaning to the community, but also you're putting your input in. So we will, we will identify a number of projects like that. And then it'd be local community to probably have a barbecue at night time. Uh, that's on a celebration. This is an incredible cultural experience. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. What's, yeah. that's yeah. interesting yeah. going and just being with the scout troop here in the U.S. Ah. with a group yeah. of pals. I mean, you're just joining with, I mean, men and women from across the world in this in these yeah. patrols. Like what, one of the things I identified, so I'm around the country at the moment, uh, trying to figure out what they're going to do on each trail. So I go into this small town in Ireland and I said, yeah, there's not much happening here. And I was talking to one of the locals, says, oh no, we have a dancing school that we all go to up in some little small, uh, a former kind of, uh, what we used to call them ballrooms of romance in Ireland years ago, but they were basically a small hall that people used to go dancing in. Anyway, it turns out these two people from Spain live in the area and they run salsa dancing classes in the middle of nowhere for the local people so you can imagine sort of small sheep farmers uh, and all sorts coming down so imagine we drop a patrol of people in there that evening and we have all the local people we have the international flavor and maybe we have people from south america who actually can actually dance salsa and they're teaching the locals so and they go home so that's a that's an experience you're not going to get as a normal tourist 
on their own. Uh, I just made a note of ballrooms of romance because that could be very, <laughs> very <laughs> useful in my marketing. Uh, yeah. so the, other one, the, other one, the other one I mentioned to you, John, is this thing we call man, men sheds. So it's, it's a club for, uh, yes. for semi retired or older men. Now they have women sheds as well. So it's not, but they come together every day, have a cup of tea and a chat, but they engage in sort of community stuff. We, we in Scotland, Ireland, we tend to use them to help us make board boxes and stuff like that for the younger sections. And so you can imagine the beavers or the cubs in your case, go along and the guys say, what do you want? We want 20 board boxes and they go ahead and they make them for them. And so the man shed movement is really cool over in Ireland. I mean, you've got yeah. hundreds of communities that have these man sheds. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which think, one side of us. Yeah, the other thing we would have in local areas would be much the same as you have American football. We have Irish football and hurling as it's called. And those clubs would exist in a lot of communities. So to be interaction with them, they'll get to do some sports and try out some stuff. And in other places, they would have these Irish cultural clubs, which are centered around Irish music and dancing and stuff like that. So imagine you go into a community or an area, you're camping maybe in the local scout campsite, or it could be on the football pitch of one of these football teams or whatever we, whatever we can find the accommodation. And then you're immersed in your interaction with that. You're interacting with that community all the time. You'll do the bit of adventure stuff on the side. We'll do the service project, but our main aim is for you to interact with the people directly and get that unique experience that you won't get anywhere else. So, so this, uh, the trails program takes place on half the mood, correct? Yeah, that's half the mood. So imagine you so go- pay. So you're out, you're experiencing the country. You are, yeah. I'm literally, you're spreading people on 30 plus trails across the yeah. country. Yeah, so we, we, so. we put them all, all over the place. Anyway, they all soup back. So on the, uh, one day they all return to a place called Malahide. Now Malahide is a public park outside of Dublin, north of Dublin. It's about 15 minutes drive from Dublin airport. It's on the coast. It's a seaside town, uh, quite popular seaside town and quite picturesque. The town itself has won a number of national awards. It's best kept town and that type of thing. And they, it, besides that was an old English landlord estate, which the family event, uh, at one stage passed over to the Irish state and trust. So they literally cool. passed it over. So it's a nice, there's a, an authentic Norman castle on the site, which overlooks our camping site. So we're camping actually in front of the castle. Uh, as I say, it's public park. So people will come in on the red top, open top buses and be looking out the top at the scout at us camping there. And, uh, and that'll be like a festival jamborees type of experience. Exactly. There. There'll be thousands tradi of us. Traditional, traditional as we would know as a jamboree, it would be camping there and doing that. Now, the, the unique thing that happens in Malahide is again, that's subdivided into two things. So you have base camp uh, program, which is much similar to what would have been at Jamborees, the global development village, some key program bases, food houses, all that sort of stuff. And then the other part is we want to bring everybody into Dublin. So that'd be 2000 people a day we bring into Dublin to what we call the Dublin experience. Oh, you're, wow. going to say to me, you're going to say to me, what does that involve? What, we're still planning it, right? But essentially, <laughs> the main problem has been the logistics. How do you bring 2,000 people into a city and let them move through a city? And that's it. so we worked out the logistics. But the, so what it involved is, we, again, probably working in patrols or working in tribe structure. They will transverse the city on a particular trail and on that and interact with again, local communities and experiences. So the four objectives, one would be a social project or a social time, some history time, uh, nature time, and uh, arts, I think arts is the last one. So they'd have four or five bases that they progress through. So the bases are maybe 40 minutes during the day, but passing through the center city. So I won't be trying to curtail a gang load of 18 to 25 year olds and tell them they can't go into the coffee shop or they can't walk up there. So there'll be loads of time to explore the general tourist ambience and other such things within the city. As long as they're at these, like the, like the surfing, be there at this location at two o'clock or that type of thing. Well, and you're experiencing it with friends. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you've yeah. just been on the trail for five days with people from around the world. And yeah. uh, I, I can just imagine what it's gonna be like then to rejoin your American 
you know, other friends for your contingent, but then these new yeah. friends and their friends and just experiencing exactly. Dublin. Are you kidding me? That's so the, the return, yeah, the return to Malahide, that's when we have what we might call, we call it the return ceremony, but that might be reflect what traditionally we might know as the opening ceremony. So we'd have video of different trails hills we'll have all that sort of stuff up on screen but essentially that's about you talking to your american friends about what your experience was oh we went surfing we went here we don't when till i tell you about this elf fella that we met what did i tell you about this so you're sharing all your experiences from the trail and it gives you a conversation piece uh for a number of days and um and then you're you know you're going into the, the new the base camp program which again is all it's all around this kind of shared of a shared experience and the uniqueness of each individual's experiences in the collective whole, if you understand me. So like one of the things I might have told you this story before, John, I'll let you cut in a second. You have to cut in on me, John, because I'll keep talking, you know. No, no, keep going. <laughs> I've got I've, I have a couple more questions. We got a question from Facebook too. So keep going. Well, we had a meeting uh, a while back, about a year ago, and we had girls, uh, we had people over from heads of contingents like yourself over to Ireland and they were, we were showing them around the different things. Just so, And one of the girls says to me, she was talking to me, and she was from Chile, I think, or Argentina. I said, what are you looking for, for over to and come to? She says, I just want to meet those two guys on, on, the, on the side of the road. And I said, what? What are you, what are you talking about? And she reached into her folder and took out this postcard which was a postcard from Ireland in 1950, <laughs> late 50s, of two old men talking at a at crossroads, and behind them is a field with um, hay stacks in it. Nice. And his, her grandmother had was Irish, obviously, and she had went over and she had held on to this postcard. So, and it, it changed my whole perspective, because I was always thinking, you know, 18, 20, 30, you know, 18 year olds, if it were 18 year olds like me, it was where was the nearest rock climb base or where was the, the nearest mountain. But here was a total different perspective. This was somebody who had a different want from an event. She yeah. wanted to meet those. She wanted to engage with those locals. She wanted that sort of unique experience. It, she didn't want to do the, the regular tourist bits. And it just opened up a different perspective for us of what we should be providing, the opportunities we should be providing to people, you know. Um, I know the last World Scout move was in Iceland, and yep. that was in 2017. And talking to the young people, young adults, I mean, now they're they're older, but uh, when they went over there, some of the things that they came back and the things I heard back were, it was incredible. We got to really do a deep dive on the UN Sustainable Development Goals and what we can do as an yeah, individual. And, and yeah. collaborating as a 20-something 20, 20 versus being a 14-year-old scout uh, where young professionals and students can actually be engaged in a lot of these issues. Talk about kind of what you what you think, I mean, what are your goals for the participants? Because I know that when they came out of Iceland, there was some real energized, there were thousands of energized young people who wanted to make a difference as it relates to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Are you continuing in that kind of conversation? Yeah, uh, so John, you know, my background comes from Messenger Peace. So I set up that project, so it's dear to my heart. And I see recently we're up to 2 billion, 2 billion hours. I remember mm -hmm. when I used to be, I remember when I used to be counting the, thousands and now it's gone to two billion so that's a great legacy but it's building on that so while young people i know you have very successful uh, program in that regards in, in in the eagle scout program and things like that but now that you're 18 and you're 25 there's a different dynamic you can do really good project work and you can really address uh, the sustainable development goals in a real way and if you have an international patrol obviously there's different types of projects so yes they would be key to the base camp, global development village, specialized type program things that we'll have on the base camp. The other thing would be very prevalent at the moment would be what's the what's the future like? What's the new world like? You know, we're coming out of COVID. How has that changed thing? Unemployment is going to be a big issue for a lot of people. How do they deal with that? Mm -hmm. um, so that's another area we're looking at. And the, the other thing, kind of half a favorite to me in my own context is, what does it mean to be a scout? Not to actually be a member, but to actually be mm. a scout in your heart and in your spirit and how you practice that on a daily basis. So uh, I know you're quite good in, 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 in uh, the US at trapping the, the ethic and bringing that into leadership. So again, as young people move from, a, a, 
a young person scouting program to, to business and industry and commerce? Did they bring that ethic forward with them, the scout law, the promise? How did they translate that into leadership positions they may have in their life? So they're all sort of the, the kind of key objectives that we're looking to, apart from all the fun stuff and all that sort of stuff, the, the sort of the underlying changes that we expect to see in people's and demeanor will be those type of things, the perspective of global issues, their place in the world, their ethics, what do they bring from scouting to that? What sort of person do they want to be in the future? They're the sort of underlying objectives uh, which are at play. Kali, I think one thing we do really well in the US is say goodbye to scouts when they're 18. Yeah. They yeah. age out because we don't have a rover program. And so, yeah. you know, and what's really exciting here in the US right now is, you know, several years ago, uh, we, we uh, the scouting program, we finally have, you know, these incredible young women who join the Boy Scouts mm. of America. And this year is the year when, and it's fun because every week I see a different press release on, uh, on young women who are becoming an Eagle Scout. And so we've yeah, got the whole right class right. of 2021 uh, that, that are becoming Eagle Scouts. And I think about, I'd love for 40 to 50% of our contingent to be made of, of these incredible young women. From yeah, right, yeah. Scouts. But we're really good at saying goodbye to Scouts when they're 18 and not really saying hello to them again until they're a parent. And then they're yeah. bringing a Cub Scout in. Uh, a kindergarten or a first grader and I love what you said about thinking about what it means to be a scout I, I remember hearing Ban Ki-moon when you know when he was the UN Secretary General say when he said I am a scout and what yeah. that means when he says I'm a scout that doesn't necessarily mean his registration is current with the Korea Scout Association or, or what unit he's serving and that's what I really get excited about thinking about the 18 to 26 year olds next summer who have had an incredible scouting experience whether they be, you know, from a Cub Scout or one of these young women that just joined a couple of years ago, you know, to what does it mean to be a scout? And, and I mean, this trip to Ireland, if that could, in, you know, put an imprint on their life to be a scout for the rest of their life. I mean, I, I love what you're thinking. In, uh, yeah, it's a, key, it's a key factor. And, and um, you don't realize how deep it runs until uh, how, how you, when you're a scout leader, as I would have been, and you probably were, John, in your time, um, you're dealing with young people every week and you're doing all the programs and you're hoping that you have had some sort of impact. And often it's not, you never, you never really find out. How you find out is you meet one of the guys walking down the street one day and he says, hiya, Collie, and you're looking at him because you remember him when he was 12 or 13 and now he's a grown, grown man or a grown woman. And you're saying, how are you doing? It's, oh, I'm, I work as a chef now, blah, 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 or I do whatever, I'm a doctor. And they'd always, say, do you know what, I had a great time in the Scouts, and do you know what, it was that day when I started cooking on camp, that's what got me interested in cooking, or that's, I done the first aid badge, or whatever the case may be, and it, surprisingly enough, I've also found that people, even friends of mine, who never, maybe were only in the Scouts for a week or a month, because they were more interested in football or whatever, they still remember their Scouting experience, and they still remember the Scout promise, so mm -hmm. And I, again, when I was doing Messenger Peace, I didn't realize how deep this in your psyche, the promise rests. You're asking young people of six, seven or eight year olds, if you're coming in clubs, to make a promise. They don't make a promise anywhere else. They never make any other pledges. And to, a promise to a child is far more important than a, an adult making a promise. And it runs into their psyche. They promise to do their best to do their blah 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 whatever whatever wording we have but they it's in it's still sitting in the back of their head they still feel that they have to do their good deed every day because i remember scouts on our all these kind of things it still sits in their back of their head it sort of drives their life so imagine we can capture our guys on the moot and let them spend time discussing that with other people from different perspectives and just set it into their psyche as a light skill that they carry forward. Um, a simple life skill. I was, I was in the Scouts. I understand their ethics. I want to bring this ethics into my job. I'm an honorable, honorable person, whatever the case may be. And it just sets them up. Where, whereas when you think there's so many, there's so much other voices coming in from social media and other politics, it's sort of the clarity can be, can be confused. Whereas the Scout methods, the genius of Braden Powell really in setting up that whole system when he did 
it still has clarity. You know, it's simple and it has clarity. So that that's one of the things that we'd be honing and in on. And it's shared. And that's the thing that's amazing yeah, is yeah, you're in an international yeah. experience and you meet that person yeah. from Nepal or from Chile exactly, yeah. or Argentina. They share yeah. the same scouting experience and values that we have. That's what's amazing about the simplicity of the scout. Uh, another thing I found through the messenger piece going around, like I'm going around initially as a you know preconceived ideas from Ireland, you know. Uh, so, and you meet some people, and they're they're they really are true scouts. You don't realize you think you're a good scout yourself until you meet some sort of people who are just sort of like solid in their whole um, and that's that's what I, I want your guys to experience and anybody else I want them to sort of meet these people and to be convinced about their convictions on different things or argue with them about them or have a bit of fun about it you know it's not we don't all have to be holy joes as such you know it just yep. it's just something in the background the other thing I was going to say to you was uh, uh, just on, again on the, I know it's uh, rover scouting might be a new to you but what happens in Ireland is, uh, and it'd be probably similar to yourselves. So when it comes 17 or 18, they move from the, the kind of regular school system into a college system. So they're either moving away from home to go to college and they, they become disconnected from where they initially came from. So in an Irish context, our, most of our move groups are attached to the colleges. They would be uh, fraternities or uh, right. interest, special interest groups. And then they have a loose attachment so they're registered as Rover Scouts, maybe through their own local group, but in actual fact, they operate in all sorts of different environments. They might go on national events or they might go on camps or local things and they support it. So they have this kind of loose attachment, which annoys people some to some extent because in a lot of cases we can't nail, nail the Rover guys down. But they're, and what we're, what we're building for all the time is give them space let them go off, do their education, get into a job. Don't be worrying about anything else. Concentrate. But when you're settled, when you're over 25, maybe you have a girlfriend, maybe you're getting married, maybe you're whatever, then consider coming back and giving some time back to the scouting as a, a lead or, or whatever. So it's a kind of an investment section to a certain extent. You're investing in perhaps a return and and if you go off and don't come back, that's okay as well. Like, but it's, it's, it. We're still investing in their future, if you understand me. And then we're trying to say, at twenty-five lads, for God's sake, these are adults. <laughs> Will you go off and do something? <laughs> we brought you this far, you know. So. Uh, well, it's yeah. important to come back. I mean, I have a I have a twenty-five-year-old son, and I have a twenty-two-year-old son, and yeah. both of them have been to world events. They are the target market for this moot, uh, and the fact that that you know it's it's really about just the global experience and experiencing ireland i was going to ask you you know ireland just seems uh i have a niece that lives there in dublin as you know but uh, oh, yeah. uh tell tell the people who are watching the video why ireland is the ideal location for this movie yeah. you see when you live in a country you don't see it but everybody kind of has this mystical uh mystical view of art now i'm a photographer i do photography as a hobby and i paint and I'm, I'm again i'm out there all the time trying to add into photographs atmosphere now maybe it's the mist rising off a lake or just the sun but there is a quality within ireland a kind of uh, the landscape is is quite varied it goes from and the hills are not too big but it the coastline is proximity to europe and the fact that it's on the edge like the next neighborhood to us is New York, if you're out in, on the west hand side or Canada or the, the east coast there. So it's always been a kind of slightly remote place. Um, obviously, a good portion of people have emigrated from Ireland during the times of the famine in the last century, or the, the 18, um, 1845. So there's quite a large collection of people in the U.S., for example, who would claim Irish heritage. I think we have more Irish people in the U.S. Oh, than yeah. in Ireland. Yeah. But there is, it, I mean, I always say to people, the difference between Ireland is, and it is probably still the same in the U.S., it's in every country. Your history is only six inches below the dirt. Like, anywhere in Ireland you walk, you'll, you'll, you'll experience um, in castle, well, there's a certain number of castles, obviously, but cities and towns it's, everything has its own history and its culture and things like that and it adds to the whole thing the other thing which is unique in Ireland is that it's a small place it's I think it's 350 miles from the top to the tail 
and it's 150 wide more or less so you can get to anywhere within a couple of hours um, and you can go from the, the really wild extremes of the Atlantic Ocean on one side whereas on the on the eastern side and Dublin side it's the Irish Sea it's a little bit more quaint uh, uh, from that point but in between is uh, there's all sorts of stuff of interest in between and there's actually a program which I must um there's a program in Ireland on Irish television at the moment. It's a nice little program where the guy goes around the country and tries to translate the names of different locations, why they were called this particular name. Oh, wow. He translates them back into old Irish and he's dealing with archaeologists and local folklore people. But it's a lovely little program to give you a sense of some of the things around Ireland that you can uh, pick up. And the other thing would be just the people themselves. If they're like me, they just can't stop talking. Their, their life is talking, telling stories, uh, having a bit of fun. I don't, I'm not a big drinker myself. I don't actually drink, but that's a big part of the culture. And um, and it's it's not so much drinking for drinking's sake. It's 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 as we used to say, where are you going? I'm on, I go down and meet a few friends on Monday night. We go out. I say, where are you going? I'm going down for pints and wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> the point. The points are just adding to the to the to the storytelling because you don't know what you're going to be as you would do with your own French John. You don't know what the hell you're going to be talking about. You'll be talking about the troubles of the day, solving all the troubles of the world, giving out about X, Y, and Z. So it's 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 just part of this social culture, and that's and and people are very welcoming and and they like to see people from other cultures coming in and engaging with them. Uh, that they're not coming just to see. They're not just the passing through tourist bus. You know, that looks out the window. It's they they they, they enjoy that sort of direct person engagement at all times. And uh, let me ask you a it, question. It's a, package, it's a package, John. It's not it's not a one individual item. It comes as a kind of a, a complete package and things. Like I that. know that I know that we're going to bring a couple hundred incredible young adults from the u.s we don't know who they are yet because our registration yeah. hasn't opened yet we're going to open our plan is to open our registration on saint patrick's day oh, uh, great. So, yeah. Yeah. but we've got a we've got a list of 400 that have already filled out saying they're interested in going uh yeah. and for our young people we're you know, literally if you're watching this and you want to go to ireland uh and to uh sit and have these conversations to meet people from around the world uh this is designed if you're 17 to 20 25 right now uh this is ideal for you next summer uh, join us. I'm going to ask a few questions here that came in through social media, Kali. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is going to be an incredible experience uh, to join us. An experience at this pandemic, we had to roll the moot, or you had to roll the moot from 2021 to 2022. Mm -hmm. By next summer, we believe everything's going to be opened up and we'll have our vaccines and uh, be ready to be together. And, and Back to normal again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and the good thing is we can all save money because we'll want to travel again. And if you're yeah. 22 to whatever, uh, being able to go to Ireland is an incredible experience. So one question came in. Uh, we talked about the trails earlier. It says, will scouts get to pick what activities they take part in during the trails? Uh, or is it more of just, it, it, when you show up, you're going to be surprised yeah. what your trail so is? So what happens, what happens is that the patrols are created in around April or May next year. And then you get to know each other online before you even arrive at the moot. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, they engage on the moot. And then at some stage, we will post on the website the 32 or 33 trails uh, with as much information as we have the activities that will be on on each trail and then the patrols select what trail they're going on not the individual so this is the first stage of let's have a discussion about this now in that discussion they need to consider for example if there's somebody in the patrol with special needs if there's dietary concerns if there's a group of people who want to do the i want to climb the mountains and there's another group who are interested in arts and culture so they have to come to that consensus. That's the first part of that experience. So That's the only fantastic. thing I'll say is most of the trails are exactly the same. When I say exactly the same, they have the same quality. So right. while they might do surfing in one location, we offer a kayaking experience in another. It depends on what each location provides in terms of the adventure experiences. They will obviously have, as I said, the service project and that will be different in each case. And then the other experience that we talked about, the um, they won't do, sorry, they all won't be going dancing up in the salsa school, but they'll have unique experiences to each location that may And, and honestly, I think what you said was 
the, yeah. the activity is the same, you know, or the, the, the structure is the same. And, and I would tell our, you know, our Americans are great at saying, I want to do this, 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 this. We're so activity driven and, and things of that nature. But to those BSA scouts that you're watching, if you've been to Philmont, if you've been, if you've done a high adventure trek before, it's you know, when you pick that trek, looking back, it's not necessarily the things you did. It was the experience of the trek. Yeah, and yeah. so, yes, you may not be salsa dancing. You may not be surfing or kayaking. You'll do something. But the experience yeah, of, yeah. of the trails program is really what it's about. And the experience of the moot is, is incredible. Go ahead. And, and each of those experiences would be unique. You know, you'd be going back to Malahide saying, I went into Mrs. Murphy's house and she taught us how to do brown bread and we cooked it in our kitchen. <laughs> and somebody else would be saying, I went salsa dancing up in this thing. And somebody else would be saying they were engaging with uh, young people and in a scout meeting or whatever. It so it's, and then imagine everybody comes back with this 5,000 different stories mm -hmm. they're all going to share again. So it's it's, share, it's kind of a shared experience as in we've done it together in the patrol, but it's also sharing your perspective on those experiences, what, how they've impacted on you, how they share it. I mean, if you're a boy or you're a girl and you're looking for chat up lines, I don't think you'd be short on a few after you come back from the place. Yeah. <laughs> there would be loads of Make how did you get on in your trip and it'll open up all sorts of conversations to uh, explore for All right, the other questions. Uh, when is U2 playing? That'll be at Malahide Castle, correct? And that'll be once we're all together that we'll, you'll have a big U2 uh, concert, private concert for us. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, that's not actually a question. That's just me wanting to hear. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. But, uh, Okay, so uh, a question somebody that did ask is Kali from Kerry. I don't know what that no, is. No, I'm from I'm from Dublin, and I live in a place called Kildare, which is a little bit further inland. Uh, I was mainly pushed out of Dublin because I couldn't afford the price of the houses in Dublin. So <laughs> I live a little bit inland, a place called Kildare, which is um, more famous for horse horse breeding and that type of thing. Nice. Um, but uh, I wouldn't be my accent. Um, was more Dublin ease, but it's kind of smoothed out a little bit. <laughs> if, you, if I if I was to put on the person from Kerry, it would be a bit difficult. They have a different a different twang to their to their to their. I guess my Robert the same, Which the same as you have in the states in different locations. You know, a guy from down south or the guy up north or west. So, but. Uh, no, okay, we, another question we, we is to talk fast. That's the only trouble. So you might need to get us to slow down a little bit just to, to catch it. Well, another here. question was uh, from uh, about IST. So what oh, opportunities yeah. are and, and the question here was for those traveling with a crew of 10 to 20 participants. We love these people. If they're, yeah. if, they're if you're over 26, if you're going to be 27 and above, you're my age and you want to bring 10 to 20 participants yeah. with you, you know, say these are your Eagle Scouts that you had as a scout leader and you're saying, Let, we're going to do one more thing. We're going over to Ireland and having an incredible experience. Uh, talk about the IST experience. Obviously, the participants will be broken up in their own patrols. Yeah. So each each. The IST, the IST if you don't know what IST is, it's the International oh, yeah. Service Team. International so, Service Team. So in, in, in plain language, the staff. <laughs> the older than that. Yeah. The staff. Um, we expect to, we, you know, we plan that there's about seven or 800 IST. But at the present moment, we have expressions of interest way in excess of that. I think it's about 1,200 uh, people who are over 27, uh, and want to be part of the experience. So imagine that's divided in half and half of those IST actually go on the trails with the guys because they're supporting the programs in each case. So if we take 32 trails with approximately 12 to 13 IST involved with them so that they're, they're, they're like shipped off with the trails. The rest of the IST are kind of creating the base camp for a number of days. And then they're also involved in the program directly. So I'm conscious that um, the IST sometimes get the, the bad end of the, the experience because they, our IST, remember, would be quite close in age to the participants. Whereas if you go to World Jamboree, there's at least maybe 10 years between the IST, whereas these are quite close. So they'll want to be involved more so and uh, so we're, we're planning also that there may be an opportunity that there's an ist trails as well so we'd have three or four right. programs which so they can have if they're not going to be staffing them directly they can be uh, they can have the same experience uh, from that point of view so 
Um, so it's it's like everything. We expect them to do a little bit of work, but we also want them to have a lot of play as well. So it's just getting that mix. And if, if the number, if we can keep the numbers of IST reasonably high, it means that people have real time off, uh, that they're not sort of completely wrecked because they're working 24-7. Uh, we want them to you know input a couple of hours, have some free time, and then mix with the others. And so a lot of them are going to be quite close in age. Uh, so at some stage when we look down the park, or the field where the tents are, it's going to be hard to distinguish who are the actual participants and who are the the the, the IST. And that's a moot. So yeah, that's it'll a be. Well, well, and we're excited. Thank you. I mean, Kali, thanks for spending as much time as you have. Not as well. I'm not now. I'm on lockdown. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, I will tell to our viewers that are watching this either live or, or later on our Facebook page. If you're from the U.S., uh, if you're part of the Boy Scouts of America organization, uh, I should when I say you're from the U.S., we've got transatlantic scouts and scouts in the Pacific yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who are growing as well. But but uh, this moot is designed for you. If you're going to be 18 to, to 26 next summer, make this a priority. Uh, our registration is going to open up here on the, uh, we hope the 17th St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we are, if you're, if you want to be in the IST, uh, you still go through the same registration process. Uh, there's a different price for the IST as there is for the, for the, uh, 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 people who are going as participants. Uh, we need IST, uh, but you'll register through the contingent and then uh, you'll be assigned a role, uh, you know, ahead of time. And it's another one of those things when you become an IST member, you're signing up to say, I'm going to help. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you'll figure out what you're going to be helping with later. But uh, uh, so can I, can I, I think the most important to, thing is yeah. just for people to realize that, hey, this is next summer. It's going to happen. It's going to be post pandemic. We're going to open up and we're going to have an incredible, incredible summer and uh time in ireland breakout breakout time you know the other thing i was going to say to you john just before we probably finish up is about the ist so traditionally in previous jamboree or we would have been saying looking for guys who are rock climbers or looking for guys who are canoes in the, in terms of the moot and the way it's set up in ireland we can't we would be we would be buying in all those services so to be external service providers so when, when you're recruiting your IST from from, uh, from the US, if you can just give us a wider skill set, uh, we won't be looking as such for activity leaders in the, you know, as you would on the Jamboree, who is, you know, somebody who's sitting on an archery base for 10 days shooting arrows. We won't be doing that. We just buy that service in. But there's a whole lot of other roles, interactions. Uh, so when they, when they make their applications in through yourselves, just gives a wider brief of their skill sets and then we can match them into something that they love to do, you know? Um, and I'll say as a marketer, I love yeah. the I, people who apply to be an IST. If you are bringing 30, 40 participants with you, uh, if you've got, you know, people who you're bringing with you, uh, that obviously we're going to try to figure out a way to get you on, you know, get you on as on our contingent and, and yeah. uh, within the IST. But we understand that scouting is a communal thing and the scouts that you want to bring, you know, you want to participate with as well. So, yeah, yeah, I know. It, 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 that was one of the things in Iceland, which what we're trying to do in an Irish context is probably learn from all the other moots. So I, I'm sure we'll get things wrong, but we're trying to make sure we don't get the same things wrong as they did in previous moots. And they didn't, while they had a lot of IST and the experience was good, it could have been a bit better by just providing some high-end interaction. So they wanted to, right. they saw the guys going off to walk up and see the glacier or go swimming in the in an Arctic pool or something, and they were looking on. They didn't get a chance to participate directly and have the same experience. So we're aware of that. We're trying as much as we can to give people enough time so they can, when the days they're off, they can become a participant on that day and then they come back and do some. So they'll do the Dublin experience. They'll do the, the trails. We'll, if those who don't go directly on the trails, we'll try and organize a small trail program for them and other events in Malahide while the other guys are going on the trails and things like that, you know, so. Well, and I've been to Iceland and I've been to Ireland. There's a lot more to do in Ireland, in my opinion. Yeah. So uh, I, I think- My main problem, my main problem would be to, my main problem would be to stop people jumping over the falls to go down to the local town. That's, yeah. it's, it's only about, it's only about a mile, less than a mile, half a mile away to the local town. So uh, that's, well, that's, that's another discussion I have to have with the community and the guards or the police and everything else. But, well, the pub owners will be very happy, I think. So, 
Uh, all right, Kali, thank you for this time. I mean, we're, we're excited here in the U.S. We're excited about putting our contingent together. Uh, and our, our leader, uh, Rick, is our contingent leader who, for those of you here in the U.S. who don't know Rick, he's our contingent leader. He's been a venturing leader in a Western region, venturing leader for some time. He has assembled, uh, I think I'm the, besides Rick, I think I'm probably the oldest person on the contingent management team. But uh, he's assigned some incredible leaders. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited about what youth, I shouldn't say you, what young people, uh, you know, college students, young professionals uh, are going to go experience Ireland with us this next summer. So, Kali, thank you for your time. Listen, great. And if you want to have another session, because obviously it'll generate more questions, I'm happy to tell you whatever I can whenever you You're need in lockdown. Know. We can do this again. This is awesome. Absolutely no problem. I'm in lockdown. I can't move. We're, I'm actually confined. To, we can't move beyond five kilometers from our house. I have to. I drove my car out to the five kilometer li li <laughs> limit recently just to give it a run. I haven't been, I'm just not driving a car, you know, something you've done every day. You just don't yeah. do it anymore. <laughs> well, and I assume, I assume you guys are going through the vaccinations right now. In, in my town, we just had 7,000 uh, over the weekend and at, yeah, at our uh, local speedway. So, uh, yeah, no, it'll be, I think uh, it'll be, uh, they've started vaccinations in Ireland, but it'd be probably mid. I don't expect to get a vaccine probably myself till around June or July, but it, it's that sort of timeline. But yeah, by September, they hope to have a good, a good portion of the country done at that stage. You know, so yeah, it's well. Thank uh, you for being you, flexible. We're excited. Thanks for expanding because I know there are some young, some young adults who really were looking forward to going to the moot, and then when it got moved a year, were were concerned that they that they were now aged out. Uh, yeah my son's one of those that he'll be 26 next year. And so just perfect timing. So thank you so much for okay. your flexibility. Uh, I know, it's, I know we're going to have more people wanting to go than can go. So if you want to go to the moot, you're from the U S uh, we'll announce it on social media here, but we are hoping to open up registration on the 17th and it's only going to cost you $150 to hold your spot. So put $150 and then you can pay off the way we're, we're extending our payment terms. So uh, if you want to go, uh, make your deposit, hold your spot, and then you just have to have half of your fees paid by the end of the year. And then uh, the other half by uh, middle of March of 2022. And that that is the perfect way to ask your parents and friends and family and scout professionals and everybody else that you know to help support you at Christmas with a gift to send you to, to Ireland in the moot. So you've got plenty of time to pay for this trip. If, you're, if you have an interest, go ahead and sign up, put the, put the deposit in, save your spot. And uh, you'll actually get to meet Kali in person. He'll be quite the rock star over there at the Moot. <laughs> I don't think so. I'd be a, I'm, I'm very much a background person. Listen, the other thing just occurred to me, and I, I let you go after this, John, because I could talk to you all day. And um, <laughs> because of the, particularly the, the U.S. connection with Ireland, and a lot mm -hmm. of the guys, I'm sure, who would be interested from your side are going to say, I always wanted to go there. My grandmother was from Ireland. Mm -hmm. Look, we, we can also just think about it. it things like, I'd like to go and see the place my grandmother was born in or where she lived or something like that. And if, if we get enough information beforehand, we can arrange that for you. Maybe not through the move, but maybe a post move or something. Yeah, before or after, yeah. We can, help all, we can help you to find out some information if you can give us some basic information. And uh, I know a lot of people, I know my own relatives in, the, in America are the same. They would be, I have to bring, I've entertained a few of them during the summer who want to come over and bring me around to the where they lived and their grades and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just an angle that people may be interested in, particularly from the US or the, you know, Canada would be, the guys from Canada would have a similar direct connection, you know, it's, it's just, uh, but again, and we're, we're talking open, to, the, we're we're talking to Scouts think, Canada. We're, yeah, we're talking to Scouts Canada right now about collaborating on our, on the yeah. pre and post event. Yeah. Uh, so, Kali, I know there's going to be more questions. I appreciate your openness. Thanks for being in lockdown and giving us an entire hour. <laughs> but uh, it's fantastic. No problem. no problem at all. Okay, listen, see you guys and hope to see you in Ireland shortly. Yeah. yeah cheers. Thanks so much. Okay, bye. Bye.